Today I am explaining the basic difference between a normal rectifier and an active rectifier. I will also cover the design of voltage controller for a single phase active rectifier and its simulation using MATLAB. This is a normal diode rectifier. This circuit is very common and we use it in most of the electronic circuit. The major problem associated with this circuit is that it draws non-sinusoidal current from the grid. That creates lots of harmonics in the grid voltage, which can affect the other loads connected to the same grid. Also, the circuit operates at very low power factor. Since the voltage drop across the diode is more, compared to MOSFET or IGBT, the efficiency of this rectifier is very less. To avoid all these issues, we use active rectifier. This is how a active rectifier looks like. Instead of diode, here we use MOSFET or IGBT. We also use an inductor, which is connected in series with the grid. The major advantage of this circuit is that the current drawn from the grid is pure sinusoidal. So there is no harmonics generated by this circuit. Also, we can achieve unity power factor. Since the voltage drop across the MOSFET is less, compared to diode, here the losses are minimum. So we can get higher efficiency. This is the control block diagram of a single phase active rectifier. We need to sense three quantities at the inverter side. One is grid voltage, then the grid current, and finally the output DC voltage. First, we need to find the error between the actual output voltage and the reference voltage. This error is then fed to a PI controller. Output of PI controller is now multiplied with cos omega t. Cos omega t is the unit vector generated by PLL. This component is aligned in phase with the grid voltage. So we multiply these two quantities, and we get current reference. This current now compared with actual inverter current and find the error. This error is fed to APR controller. I have explained more about PR controller in one of my previous videos. You can check out that for more information. I will leave the link in the I button. So finally, we add grid voltage to PR controller output to get reference voltage. And this reference fed to the PWM generation block. This is the PWM generation block. We are using unipolar PWM technique. So the reference voltage is compared with triangular carrier wave. Since we are using unipolar PWM, positive and negative references are compared. Output of each comparator is inverted and connected to each IGBT. This concludes the discussion on controller. Now we start doing the simulation. This is the complete simulation diagram of a single phase active rectifier. I have already completed the placement and connection of each and every component. Now I will explain each and every component I have used in this simulation. I will start with AC voltage source. I have set peak amplitude as 325 volt and frequency as 50 hertz. This is the voltage measurement block to measure the grid voltage. This is the go-to block used to label the grid voltage. Name it as V-grid. This is the current measurement block. One thing to note here is that the direction of this current measurement block is towards the inverter side. This is the go-to block used to label this current. Name it as I-grid. This is the filter inductor along with its series resistance. Give resistance as 0 0.001 ohm and inductance 4.06 millihenry. This is another current measurement block. One thing is to note here is that the direction of this current measurement block is towards grid. This is the go-to block used to label this current. Name it as IINV. These are the IGBTs which act as switches used to form the rectifier bridge. Gate drive signal is connected at the terminal of each IGBT using from block. This from block marked as PWM1. This from block marked as PWM2. This from block marked as PWM3. This from block marked as PWM4. This is the filter capacitor along with its ASR. Give resistance as 0.0042 and capacitance as 3000 microfarad. This is the load resistance. I have given 80 ohm as resistance. You can give a different value. This is the voltage measurement block used to measure the output voltage. 
This is the go-to block used to label this voltage. Name it as VDC. This whole blocks are part of PLL. I have already explained this in one of my previous video. I will leave a link the I button. You can check out that. Grid voltage is connected to the input of PLL. This is the input block of PLL where we connect the grid. This block named is V grid. Now we shall look at the controller blocks. This is A from block. This block coming from this point. That is the DC output voltage. This block is named as VDC. This is a constant block. Here we set the reference value of the output voltage. I have given a reference value of 400 volt. This block is used to find the error between reference voltage and actual voltage. This is the PI controller. Set value of KP is 0.5 and KI is 100. This is a multiplier block which generates the current reference. This is the unit vector generated by the PLL. This is the active component of the grid current. This block coming from this point. I have labeled this as cos omega t. This is a sum block. Make sure that you keep the same list of signs. This is the actual sense current. This go-to block is connected to this point. So I have named this as IINV, same as the above from block. These all blocks are part of PR controller. For tracking AC quantities, PR controller is better than PI controller. That's why I use PR here. This is again a sum block. This is the KP gain of PR controller. I have set KP as 4.06. This is the KR gain of PR controller. I have set KR as 100. These are the integrator blocks. This is the omega square divided by KR value of PR controller. I have set this as 986.8. This is again a sum block. This is again a sum block. This is the grid voltage feed forward block. This block is coming from this point. I have named this as B grid. Same as the from block, it is connected. This is the final output of controller. This block is connected to the input of PWM generation block. Both these blocks are named as VREF. This is the triangular carrier signal for the PWM generation. These values correspond to 10 kHz switching frequency and minus 1 to 1 amplitude. These are the comparator blocks. In unipolar PWM modulation, we need both positive reference and negative reference. This gain block is used to generate negative reference. Not gate is used to invert each PWM for each leg of inverter. These are the final PWM output. Each output named as PWM1, PWM2, PWM3, and PWM4. Now all PWM has to be properly connected to the gate of IGBT. The first PWM goes to the first IGBT likewise, all the four signals. Here I have connected V grid and I grid to the scope and VDC to the other scope.
This is the Power Guy blog. Set the simulation type discrete, and the sample time, 1 microsecond. Now open the model configuration parameters. Choose solver type ODA23T. Finally set the simulation time, 1.5 seconds. Now run the simulation. First, we shall see the DC output voltage. The output exactly matches with our reference, that is 400 volt. Now let's see the grid output voltage, and current. Both should be in phase, so that we will achieve unity power factor. You can clearly see that both voltage and current are in phase. So we have achieved unity power factor. Now we will try a different value of preference voltage. I am trying 500 volt. Now run the simulation again. Let's see the DC voltage first. Now output has changed to our new reference value, that is 500 volt. Let's see grid voltage, and current again. Both are in phase, so we achieved UPF, here also. We shall try one more value of preference voltage. Set 600 volt as the reference. Now run the simulation again. See the DC voltage first. The output now has changed to our new reference value, that is, 600 volt. Now see the grid voltage and current. As you see, both are in phase. So we again achieved unity power factor. Now we will try to change the load, and see the output. I am changing the load from 80 ohm to 500 ohms. Now run the simulation again. See the DC voltage first. Even though we have changed the load, output remains the same at 600 volt. Now see the grid voltage and current. Both are in phase. This concludes the discussion on single phase active rectifier. Thank you.